This video talks about torsa de puentes. Now I will be addressing each of these questions I've written here one at a time. So let's get so what exactly is torsa de puentes? Torsa de puentes is an irregular rhythm that originates from the ventricles. So conventionally, a rhythm should start from the AC node moving on to the AV node. But here, the rhythm is starting. It's an irregular rhythm that originates in the ventricles. No rhythm should originate in the ventricle. It should propagate onto the ventricle. So in this torso de pointis, it is originating in the ventricles. Now, what causes torsad? Usually, prolongation of the QT intervals is going to cause torsads. So, what really causes prolongation of the Q QT interval? Well, hypokalemia can cause it, hypomagnesemia can cause it, alcoholic and diarrhea. These are some of the causes, common causes of uh, prolongation of QT interval. And prolongation of QT interval in turn causes torsads. So that's how they're related. So there are drugs that causes prolongation of QT interval. Then there is the physiologic uh, abnormalities. So when it comes to physiologic abnormalities, the causes of prolongation of QT interval, which can again lead to torsad, is these. So how can you remember these? I remember them as HAD, HHAD, H for hypokalemia, H for hypomagnesemia, A for alcoholics, and D for diarrhea. These are some of the common physiologic causes of um, prolongation of QT interval which can lead to torsades. Now some drugs are notorious for causing torsades. For example, sodalol. This is a class 3 antiarrhythmic. Okay? And cisapride. In fact, cisapride was removed from the market because it causes death due to torsades. So these are notorious. Cisapride is a GI drug. Okay? Um, there are also other drugs. So these drugs that I have here, these drug increases QT interval and as a result causes torsa, torsades, except one. That is amiodarone. This is also a class 3. See, this is also a class 3 and that's also a class 3. This increases uh, QT interval, but it actually lowers the incidence of torsades. Sotalol increases Q QT interval and as a result increases the uh, increases the um, the likelihood of having torsades. So even though they're working the same mechanism, one is causing the incidence to go higher, the one is causing the incidence to go lower. Here I've mentioned all the drugs with the QT interval. Yes, amiodarone does not cause torsades, but it does increase QT interval. So I wanted to mention this in here as well. So the way I remember drugs that cause QT interval are maple syrup. So CCS, so M for methadone. Methadone is an opioid. Uh, we usually use it for um, treating uh, heroin addicts. Amiodarone is a class 3 antiarrhythmic. Procanamide is class 1A uh, antiarrhythmic. Lithium, it's used for bipolar. Erythromycin, it's a macrolide. Chloroquine is a drug for malaria. So all these drugs is going to cause prolongation of the QT interval. So again, one more time, the mnemonic is maple, methadone, amiodarone, procanamide, lithium, erythromycin, and syrup, as in CCS, chloroquine, cisapride, and sodalol. Now, what about these two drugs, clarithromycin and haloperidol? Clarithromycin is a macrolide, and haloperidol is obviously an antipsychotic. Now, these two drugs are the uh, torsad causes due to clarithromycin and haloperidol are increased due to P450 inhibition. P450 decreases metabolism. That will increase the incidence of torsades due to clarithromycin and haloperidol. Now, I took this opportunity to talk about P450 inhibitors, and uh, the mnemonic is MAGIC RAX, M for macrolide, A for amiodarone, G for grapefruit, choose, I for isoniazid, C for cimetidine, R for ritonavir, A for acute alcohol abuse because chronic alcohol abuse is actually going to cause P450 induction. Okay, um, I mistakenly wrote cimetidine twice so actually the second C is for superfloxacin, K for ketoconazole and S for Sulfonamide. These are all the P450 inhibitors. So again, M for macrolides, A for amiodarone, G for grapefruit juice, I for isoniazid, C for cimetidine, R for ritonavir, A for acute alcohol abuse, C for cipro, K 
K for ketoconazole and S for sulfonamide. All these causes P450 inhibition. Now, coming back to my last question is what does torsad look like? Torsad looks like something like this. So you can look it up on the internet. So pretty much it looks like you know there is a bulgy region and then there is a narrow region and again there is a bulgy region and then there is a narrow region and then thing continues. This is like someone twisted our ECG with hands, you know, twisting it, twisting it. That's what torsad really means. Torsad to point is mean twisting of the points, I think. So someone is twisting it. So that kind of up and then low and then up and low, this kind of bulging, narrowing, bulging, narrowing region, that's what typically a torsad look like.